Today's destination is going to be a hot run, so bring your heat sinks because today we're going to visit a small planet inside the corona of a star. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy and to another episode of Worth a Visit. A small series where I go out and have a look at some of the interesting places in Elite. And today we are in the Skadi system. This is a very well known system amongst explorers because Skadi 1 is a small planet in the system orbiting inside the atmosphere of the parent star. And in the past I've often seen people being very confused about the fact that I used the word atmosphere um, about a star because they say well a star doesn't have an atmosphere but well technically it does and it's a common misconception that uh, um, that a star does not have an atmosphere many would say that well it has a corona right but the corona is actually just a part of the sun's atmosphere um, because you see what we refer to as the surface of the star that is what you would in astronomical terms refer to as the photosphere this is where light is escaping from this the star this is the um, the layer where the majority of the light comes from um, and above that we have the layer called the chromosphere which directly translated means sphere of color um, so if the light comes from the photosphere why do we then have a color sphere above it well in the chromosphere just above it a lot of the superheated um, hydrogen that is uh, left will be burned and that will produce a reddish color and this is why why we get much of the of the red colors uh, in the sun's spectrum comes from that superheated uh, hydrogen being burned in uh, um, in the chromosphere then we have a very thin layer that is often not um, mentioned because it, it's so thin that it might seem insignificant but it's actually very important this is called the transition region and the transition region is, as I said, a very thin region where pretty much every property, every physical property in the sun's atmosphere changes very rapidly over a very short distance. It's almost like a second surface. But the reason why we don't refer to the transition region as the surface is because it's not visible in, um, in the visible spectrum. Whereas if you go to the ultraviolet spectrum, you can clearly see it. So, again... So it, it depends, for the definition, depends on your wavelength, which, uh, uh, which height you would define as the surface of, uh, of the sun. Um, and then, of course, at the, above the um, transition region, we have the corona, which is by far the largest of, uh, of the areas, and also the hottest. You would expect that the layer, the furthest away from the star, would be, uh, would be um, um, the coldest, but actually the, the surface, the photosphere, is about 5,700 5, Kelvin, um, which is pretty hot by all means, whereas the, the, the uh, corona is, I think, a couple of million, one to two million Kelvin, so it's a very, very, very hot place, and for a very long time, this puzzled us why the chromos sorry, why the corona is so hot as it is. And I think one of the leading theories at the moment, at least the one that I think is most likely, is that the coronal loops that you see coming up from the sunspots, um, which is anchored on the um, on the photosphere, um, due to something called flux freezing, which we'll not go into more detail with now. But these loops conduct heat much in the same way as if you run a strong current through a... Um, um, through a let's say a piece of, uh, of a carbon like a like the small um, you get in, uh, in in a pen if you take now a pencil if you take the center of a pencil and run a strong current through it um, you will see that it will heat up from the center first and uh, the theory is that there's something similar that happens here that you have these loops and we know that there are very strong currents running through these loops like electrical current and it is then expected that they will be heated up at the top, at the middle of the loop, which is then heating up the corona. So that's how the energy is transferred from the surface and up on, into the corona. And the chromos sorry, the I can't call it the chromosphere, the corona is of course where we find this small planet, Scardi One. Um, well within the fuel scooping range of the star. 
I highly recommend if you're going here that you disable your fuel scoop. It will significantly decrease the amount of heat you're gaining if you have your fuel scoop closed. Um, I would also recommend bringing um, a few heat sinks. It is not mandatory, but it is going to make your life a lot easier. As soon as you get close enough to the planet, the heat is not going to be that big of an issue. Um, but a fun thing about the planet here is because it is so close to the star um, and it is so small, even if you are on the night side, what you quote unquote night side of the planet, large part of it, you yeah, would still be able to see the edge of the parent star. I actually did the calculation and about 63% of the planet will always be covered in daylight. So there will always be 63% of the planet that will receive sunlight. Um, as you can always so see here on uh, on the planet as we are approaching it, actually, you can actually see that there are parts of the planet that are on the night side that is still covered in daylight. The surface temperature on the planet itself is around 980, 990 uh, degrees Kelvin, which is hot enough to melt aluminum. So how an SRV manages to drive across that surface, I have no idea, but it does. So all in all, it's a quite interesting planet, especially because of that star. You can really get some awesome shots of, um, of the parent star by, uh, by sitting on the surface of this planet. But anyway, I will leave you with a quick time lapse of, uh, of the star. I really hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.